Hello guys, this is Lina Slima Yankee to Hotel. Today I'm gonna test the antenna I wanted to make long long time ago. And this is my VHF UHF J Pole antenna. I've been inspired to make this antenna by an article in QST magazine February 2003 by Edison Fong WB6IQN and uh, I was intrigued that this antenna is dual band VHF UHF and working as a full size half wave antennas both on 2 meters and on 70 cents. Another intriguing detail is that this antenna is made of 450 ohms ribbon cable. I've done it and today we have a local groups event on 2 meters. I will see how well I'm gonna be heard on my ICOM IC705. To keep this antenna or any other light mast actually on the roof rack of my radio van I've designed a special holder comprised of a piece of plastic chopping board and a IKEA counter-lever kind of in the role of the special bracket. This bracket slides in nicely into this roof rack here. So, and that's it. And then I fix it. And then I fix it with a bolt. This is a connection box with a coax cable. I design it and print it on my 3D printer. And it's uh, also elements uh, safe. That's my Ecom IC705 installed in my in my radio van. So let's use the uh, SWR metering function inbuilt in the Ecom IC705. All right, you see? In the range from 145 to 50 to 145 750 megahertz so the SWR is less than 1.5 I can see that the best uh, SWR is on the top end of the of 2 meter band in the FM range less than 1.5 no problems my cable is not the best in the world it's RG58 not not probably the best cable for VHF UHF but you know it's just a piece short of it few meters for more serious activities probably i need to change it into some some more vhf uhf minded cable all right i i wonder how about 430 then imagine this is kind of satellite frequency yeah also less than 1.5 no problems I have two full-size half-wavelength antennas working pretty nicely. He says 5.9 plus and, and very good strong signal. Lima Yankee 1 Zulu India also gives me 5.9 plus report and compliments the signal quality. He also wonders if I'm using a 50 watts mobile radio and I'm telling it's just 10 watts and ICOM IC705 into a J-Pole antenna. Alright, so there is some activity, mostly local stations, I hear mostly local stations in the vicinity of, you know, 10 to 20 kilometers. Everybody say this antenna is working very nice, that's, that's very glad to hear. Alright, so now as we know this antenna can work and can really do a decent work like you no know, opening up the repeaters, taking part in the local FM contests or doing casual rack chew uh, QSOs with other local hams. Now let's take a look what's inside the tube, what's inside the pipe. I have put this ribbon mate antenna into a plastic tube and just you know to prevent from elements and have it more rigid and you know be able to install it on my top of the roof of my house or on the top of the roof of my van this so239 hub so to say uh, is not fixed to to anything so but if you if, if you'd like you know to pull it out you would only succeed maybe for one inch or something later on it it, it will stuck because we need to take a look at the 
top cap the top cap has got a kind of a safeguard just just a tiny rope here and this uh, you know this cap and this rope keeps the antenna the the ribbon antenna inside you know sitting firmly and not you know letting it slip down or be pulled out of the out of the pipe and you know if you ever need to take this antenna out of the pipe you just need to untie this tiny rope easily you see so and this is my 3d printed i designed it and then printed on my 3d printer so the upper cap and the bottom hub is also now you can keep on pulling and you see voila first you see the three ferrites is to prevent the common mode current entering into my radio and it works i'll just you know pull it out slowly and you will see what's what's inside that's it so here is the pipe and here's the antenna so basically you can use this ribbon antenna as a roll-up antenna uh, just the the only problem is as long as you put it into the pipe the tube the plastic pipe has got its own velocity factor and it means you need to shorten up the antenna so it means if you would like to use this antenna as a roll-up antenna like you know hang it on the tree pack it a more compact way into your uh, backpack then you need you know to design it and to cut it longer this antenna must be a little bit longer so otherwise you will have the resonance uh, too high because now this antenna would be too short to operate in the open air but it's okay into operating the plastic pipe. Now this is a 3D printed feed point hub. So here's a cap which you can easily open. So that's a cap. And here inside you see the SO239 socket and the cable soldered up to the contacts of the socket. There's nothing more in this box. <laughs> the cap, which is easy to put on again, and it sits. And it serves as a pad if you need, you know, to put antenna standing somewhere and to have, you know, the socket easily available this part is a coax feed line uh, so the antenna actually starts here this feeder line is needed you know to have some space free uh, the antenna starts from here and goes go, goes up there it means in this segment like probably some uh, 15 inches or like 40 40 cents uh, 40 centimeters we use this space of the pipe uh, for mounting for mounting and not uh, interfering with the antenna so uh, all the clamps or uh, another you know, mounting pipes uh, uh, will be up to this place the antenna itself starts at this point and is made of two pieces of ribbon cable in my case is 450 ohms windows line one piece is comprised of the matching step which starts here up to here and it's 47 centimeters or roughly 18 inches then there's a notch here and then the 70 cents antenna which is 30 cents if we measure here from the notch to the end and this is the end piece of the cable and it's 40 centimeters and the length of the stub is 11.6 centimeters so all these measurements uh, well they may have or may not have uh, any sense for you 
because I cut it for my needs. And my needs were uh, the central frequency on two meter band. The, it was uh, 145.5. And on 70 cents, it was somewhere around 433, 30, 35 megahertz. So, and this is my European band layout. So if you look at the original article in the QST, you will find a, a little bit different measurements. So uh, please be free you know, to choose your own or make your own calculations. There are calculators and there are formulas. You can easily calculate you know, uh, the length of the stub, uh, of the matching stub, the length of the half wave on 70 cents of your desired frequency and uh, the length, uh, the half wave length of the, so to say, of the whole piece of the antenna for two meters. The ingenious idea of uh, matching stub is that this is a transmission line and it's a quarter wave. So the quarter wave transmission line uh, shorted on one end and is open on the other end. So it acts as a transformer. So if on this end we have very high impedance, like, you know, it's a fit point of the half wave and fed antenna here for 70 centimeter band. So this is very high impedance, could be two, two to three kilo ohms. We can say this is an open. This end here is shorted. So, and somewhere in between from shorted to open, we need to find the sweet point, which is 50 ohms of impedance. This point, in my case, is here. It's four centimeters from the shorted end up of the stub. You need to adjust this, you know, and you need to find this point by soldering and resoldering. You may, you know, make it on the first attempt. You may need, you know, to solder and resolder, measure and remeasure the SWR. So the shorted stub made of coax cable here, it separates, it disconnects the 70 semps antenna from the rest of the ribbon cable and, you know, makes it, makes it act as a half wave antenna on 70 semps. Calculating the length of this stub, you need to bear in mind what kind of cable do you use. So, if you use, as in the original QST article, the RG174 cable uh, is going to be one length, and it's in the article. And uh, if you're using different cable as I did, and I'm using here RG142B cable, so then it's got different velocity factor, and you need to have uh, take it into account. The velocity factor of this cable is 0.7. Why was I using the RG142B cable? Just because it's more powerful, it can handle uh, more, so to say, voltage, more power. The specs say on 150 megahertz, uh, you, you could use up to one kilowatt and up to 600 watts on 70 semps. But well, of course, I'm not gonna use this level of power but still uh, 100 like 50 watts i can easily use because i've got a power amplifier on two meters you may see the traces of multiple cuts and errors here so i've been you know uh, trying cutting measuring making mistakes remeasuring recutting and resoldering the pieces of this cable uh, so it's kind of a this is a working version of of the cable so, but normally, uh, normally you can you can try to do it from the first attempt, uh, if you have got the dimensions calculated correctly. So then it's not going to be any problems actually. All right. So just a word about tuning and pruning of the antenna. I would recommend, and uh, and uh, Eddie Fong recommends in his article, uh, to tune uh, to check the SWR. At every, at every stage of construction of the antenna. So first, when you connect the matching step to the 70 semps antenna, the shorted step and the rest of the cable not connected yet. We only talk about this part. 
So then when you have 70 cm antenna, the cable connected, the feeding point found for 50 ohms, so then you measure um, measure the SWR and you cut the length of the antenna you know accordingly in order to have the nice SWR on your uh, frequency desired. Then you connect the shorted stub, the open end of which goes to the 70 cm's antenna. And uh, you also uh, have the stub initially like something like 15% longer than it's needed, you know, accordingly to your calculations. And you trim, uh, you know, tiny step by tiny step until you get the, again, the nice SWR on 70 cm's. So then you still don't have this connected. Uh, then, when you have everything is done, the, the the steps and the and the antenna and the matching uh, stub is fine. The SWR is good on 70 cm's. So you connect the rest of the ribbon cable, which is also a little bit longer than than you would need, you know, according to your to the calculations. And then you trim the length of the rest of the ribbon cable. To have the best SWR on two meter band. This is the tuning procedure. If you make a roll up antenna, so if your antenna is going to be like this, you know, hanging somewhere in the open air, that's it. If you decide to put, as I did, the antenna into a plastic tube, then measure all these SWR uh, measurements, make all these SWR measurements with pieces of antenna in the pipe. Each time you do the next step, you, you put it into the pipe. So that's, that's what prevent you know, from mistakes of cutting the wrong length of the, of the cable. So summing up guys, before I put it back into the pipe, what kind of antenna is it? So I would say it's a cheap, reliable, easily homemade and good everyday VHF, UHF antenna. Probably it won't beat, you know, monster UHF, VHF diamond antenna, which is seven meter long. Uh, so, and working very, very nicely on, on these bands. But, uh, well, this antenna occupies not so much space. It certainly works better than the rubber duck. It certainly works better than the one quarter wavelength, uh, you know, monoband antenna. Uh, so, and it could serve for years for everyday life purposes, like, you know, opening the repeaters, doing the digital VHF, UHF traffic, and just rack chewing with your local uh, hams and local uh, FM uh, networks. The files for the 3D printed hub and the cap, if you like them and you'd like, you know, to, to use them, uh, the, the link will be in the description. I load it uh, for free on the printables.com and you can download and use it if it, you know, will suit your pipe, your tube. If we measure the inner diameter of the, of the tube, we will see that it's 32 millimeters. So the 32 millimeters of inner diameter tube is what you need if you need to use this, this specific hub. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment in the comment section. What do you think about uh, ribbon, uh, ribbon cable J-Pole antenna? What's your success in using this antenna? Please consider subscribing if you'd like you know, to see more videos like this. All right, guys, so with this said, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in my next videos. 73, this is Linus, Limo Yankee to Hotel. Cheerio!